Hello everyone, today's video we are going to be reviewing the new Batman film that came out with Robert Pattinson. I am joined by my father. Say hi, Dad. Hello. Thank God I didn't say hi, Dad, this time. <laughs> so anyway, what was your thought? What, like, what did you think of this new Batman film that came out with Robert Pattinson? Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was uh, original and uh, I think it was quite different from the other Batman films. Right. Uh, one thing that I liked about it is that it, it's an own entity. It's its own entity. It's not connected to anything in the DC universe. Right. Uh, and it was a very gritty, um, very dark movie. Absolutely. It's not one for the kiddies. No. <laughs> this is not one that my uh, niece and nephew will be watching anytime soon until they're at least seventeen. I really liked it a lot. It was probably definitely like it's really hard to say. Would you consider the, the? It's really a different type of Batman. Where it's hard to say if this is really really considered the best Batman. Like this is a really top eighty nine Batman or Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. It's just it's like you said that time with uh, in the bat in the Dark Knight review that if like these movies like crossed over, they'd be like out of place with uh, like they wouldn't know like where they would fit in in the movies because of the different like universes and different uh, timeline periods. Right. I, I think the. A big difference with uh, the Tim Burton movie, even though that was dark, uh, is that the the villains are portrayed in a more realistic way this time. Uh, yeah. There's no uh, costumes or anything along those lines, which brings it back, at least with, with Burton's movie, uh, brought it back to uh, the way these villains were portrayed in the comic books at that time. Right. Um, these villains are, are very dark. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, they're not anything that you would imagine uh, them to be like. Uh, there's no goofy Riddler. Uh, no, 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 no Frank Gorshin uh, yeah. over the top campiness. Right, or, or Jim Carrey. No. No, oh, not even performance. What, what, what did you think of Paul Dano as the Riddler? I thought he was excellent. It was a different, as I said, a completely different take on yes. the character. I, I loved it. Probably my <clears throat> thus far favorite Riddler performance outside mm -hmm. of like the animated series. and. Yeah, it was quite scary. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh very. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I think people are going to rank this in some ways a little bit of a horror, even though it's not a horror movie, but it had a little bit of a horror aspect. His character reminded me of like Kevin Spacey from uh, Seven, and also somewhat of the Zodiac Killer in some ways. Yeah, he did. It yeah. did remind you of that. Yeah, that interrogation scene. I'm thinking about a little bit of the Dark Knight, but there was also some like Sounds of the Lambs a little bit right there in some ways. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. could. See that? Yeah. What? Do you, what? Do you, I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Go ahead. What did you think of Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman? She was great. Yes. Yeah, she was excellent. Um, both uh, <clears throat> her performance and also she was very athletic. Yes. And very convincing. Yes. In the in the fight scenes too. Absolutely. I, I think more so than um, um, Michelle Pfeiffer or Anne Hathaway or more so than both of them. You know? <laughs> I honestly think she's like my favorite act well, thus far. Like one of my favorite actors that played Catwoman and also. I think I hate to. I'm sorry to say this, but I think she was better than Anne Hathaway. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I think she was. <laughs> yes, totally. And once again, I loved her and her. And any like Catwoman, like Batman film, I always, I always enjoy the performance and the chemistry of how like you have two complete opposites. One who like fights for justice. You have like one who's a cat burger, but at times she's very you know good. She like bounce. She's a fifty fifty uh, Catwoman. Yeah. Yeah. And this is not uh to put down Burton's Batman. Oh no, not at all. Or or Nolan's Batman because no. they 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 were uh, superb, especially I enjoy Nolan's yes. Batman with uh Christian Bale. Um really great great uh, films. Yeah. What What did you think of Robert Pattinson as Batman? I was surprised. He was so convincing. Uh, 
he plays a more uh, moody and depressed type of character as Bruce yeah. Wayne. He's not the playboy that Christian Bale. No, played. he doesn't. He doesn't have two models on his side like in the first right. Batman. Batman Begins, where he's hiding from, you know, trying to hide his like you know image of Batman. And right, he was more of like you said a reclusive than uh, than mm -hmm. you know. Which is an interesting take on it. I mean, I think they're both valid, uh, and this was different, uh, and it was uh, appropriate. Yeah, I don't know why. Like his the way he looked at Bruce Wayne, I thought he looked like so emo to me for some reason. Yeah. yeah. He did. That was also a little bit different too, in a way. Mm -hmm. And also, we finally, for the first time, like in all Batman films. He took the mask off, and he's got the black uh, eyes in his... Because uh, in another like, Batman film, you, you see them take the mask off. You don't see the black eyes. I'm like... Right. And, again, this is a, a grittier, more realistic portrayal. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this Batman is a vengeful Batman. Yes. E even more so than Christian Bale. Oh, yes. That scene, the opening scene, like when it's it's Halloween and he narrates, you know, describing Gotham, its corruption, and also like the gangs and the, its economy. I liked it out like when we're first like twenty. It's like similar like with the eighty nine Batman when you first see Batman fight those two goons who mm -hmm. attacked some you know some random family stole their cash and their wallets, and you know like similar situation like this innocent civilian you know he's just probably coming home from work etc. and he. He's attacked by these a uh, group of gang leaders for no reason sometime, and then Batman, you know, like he walks and he appears. They're like, "What the hell are you supposed to be?" He starts fighting. He goes, "I'm vengeance." Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Yeah, and, yeah. and the fight scenes are are great. They and, are, and uh, he has a few interesting gadgets too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As I was saying, also, yeah, that, that opening sequence was awesome of Batman's first introduction. I feel like in each Batman film of, like, the first movie, there's always a great, like, uh, intro to showing the Batman character. Like, you know, again, 89, and also Batman Begins, and... Yeah, I also uh, thought it was interesting that um, they... Uh, at least it was Commissioner Gordon refers to him as detective. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, he started out in detective comics. Yeah. Yeah. And he's always been that way. Right. But, but uh, I don't remember a film where uh, someone actually referred to him as a detective, somebody who is trained in determining what happened at a crime scene. Not even, and I think that's the first time I saw Batman at a, at a crime scene. Yeah, they say, I, I can agree on that mm -hmm. one. I feel like in, like, maybe comic, well, maybe in comic <clears throat> books, but in movies, I can't think of, like, where Batman was, like, you know, after a crime scene, Batman was there to, like, investigate, to find out what happened and who was the, the murder behind all this. Right. Yeah. I, what did you think of the guy who played Commissioner Gordon, Jeffrey Wright? Yeah, I thought he was excellent. Uh, he did a great job. I agree. Uh, and it's interesting, uh, the interplay between Batman and Commissioner Gordon and how they work together. Yeah. Even working together outside of... <sighs> what, what, what did you think of Commissioner Gordon in this movie? Yeah, I thought he was excellent. He was very convincing, and uh, I liked the way that the two of them uh, worked together and how the interplay between the two of them. Uh, they even worked together outside of the system. Yes. Uh, where uh, they had to do some things uh, that... Off uh, the book. Off the books that had a, uh, was against what his uh, right. fellow uh, police officers, right. you know, they weren't involved in certain things. But uh, I thought it was great. He was really, he was terrific. He I was. Liked him as, as Commissioner Gordon. We have enough. All right, we have enough on that one, yeah. Well, let me, as I was, I really had no idea, like, who he was. Uh, I don't really know much about him as an actor. I don't know what else he's done outside of. Uh, yeah, neither, this neither was my first. I. Mm hmm I, I feel like, you know, that can happen sometimes with, like, certain actors that you, like, see for the first time. You didn't know they'd been around this long, not knowing they were in this mm -hmm. movie or that movie. And also, what, what did you think of, uh, Colin? It was hard to recognize Colin Farrell as the Penguin. Uh, 
Yeah, after seeing the movie, I still don't recognize him as right. Colin Farrell. I don't know how they did it. I don't know. If that is CGI, it's the best CGI I've ever seen. It's it's flawless. Right. And it looks like a completely different person. Right. I feel like he was also going for more of, like, the way he was talking, like, the kind of, like, gangster, like, Robert De Niro or maybe Al Pacino and other, like, gangster movies. Right, and again, this is a more realistic approach. Uh, this is the type of uh, character, when you look at him, uh, he's a realistically portrayed uh, person who you could call Penguin for a nickname, for example. <laughs> right. Uh, it does not, it's nothing like uh, Danny DeVito. I was about to say that. Nothing like Danny DeVito or Burgess Meredith going back to the 60s Batman. Right. This is a, a person that is a criminal, that is a mean-looking person. Yeah. That uh, is kind of dumpy right. with a no little bit of a large nose that you could say, uh, oh, I could see where they would nickname this guy the Penguin. Right, right. Not like like you said, Danny DeVito... Right. Wasn't wasn't born he, the like half man and half penguin and right. definitely did not eat the raw fish this time. Thank no. God. No, no, <laughs> or he didn't he, he, he didn't bite some guy's nose and he wasn't a sexual predator like in Batman Returns when he mm -hmm. would uh, when he touched the, the woman's breast when he put the uh, penguin may mayor's uh, right yeah mm -hmm. yeah I I definitely will say he was really good as penguin but again I just could not well I, mean, I, I knew he was playing penguin it was just hard to like recognize him like as that. Because when you know when you think Colin Farrell, you think like you know Pretty Boy. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it's a it's amazing. Yeah, I, I just yeah. can't say enough about how convincing he was as not looking like Colin Farrell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because someone wrote a uh, like put a meme on Facebook. They the actor Richard Ky you know Richard Kind, the comedian, you know right. tall, and somebody was saying how was they casted Colin Farrell as the Penguin, not Richard Kind, who had more of a realistic type of look more than Colin Farrell's uh, face as the Penguin. Right. But I don't know, maybe Matt Reeves thought Colin Farrell was just the right choice compared to... Again, I don't know how they did it, because uh, I'm not a fan of, of uh, CGI when Me it comes either. to aging people. Uh, for example, The Irishman. I haven't seen that yet. It was completely unconvincing. Right. Uh, it looked fake. Right. Uh, and that was really to the detriment of the movie. Right. But uh, I, this is just... Something completely different. The movie, the movie also took like obviously inspiration from you know again Batman comic books like uh, the, it definitely felt like the Long Halloween is like a live act. It's funny, recently like a year ago the uh, animated Long Halloween came out. Now it's like uh, been done again, but in live action almost. I mean not a hundred percent. Whereas with those animated films, they are like, you know, doing 100% true to the comic book, whereas this is a live action film. They got to at least, you know, you know, to trim some things off of it, not to make it 100% to the comic. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And also there's a little bit somewhat, well, you know, it's not Dark Knight Return, but, you know, like with Dark Knight Return, it's more like you said, gritty, violent, and brutal is why it's somewhat of a Dark Knight Returns inspiration. Right. Yeah. Also, what did you think of John Totoro as uh, Carmine Falcone? No, he, John Turturro is a great actor. He is. And he, he, was, is. he was, you know, he was very convincing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, his his character, he, he did uh, he, he did a terrific job. I could tell, like, he maybe could have had some inspiration of, like, you know, the Godfather in some ways. Of his, I mean, his, like, because the character of Carmine Falcone was inspired from, like, the Godfather. Right, yeah, degree. it's a big, uh, a big crime yeah. boss. But he just can't do it. Yeah. But, but he can't do a Marlon Brando impression, though. No. <laughs> no. It also was an intro. well... This is a little bit of a spoiler. This was a, a like, if you haven't seen the movie yet, stop right here. A little bit of a spoiler alert. I did not see it coming. How Carmine Falcone was uh, Catwoman's uh, th that that was that was her father. Right, I know. Right, because yeah. it might, it might, it might I, I, at first you're thinking like he's a mob gangster, ball gonna loves women and stuff, but yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting twist. It was. Mm -hmm. It was. Are you excited? Well, it's funny how, like, with, uh, going back to Robert Pattinson, people, like, gave this guy, like, a bad reputation because of uh, Twilight. You never saw Twilight, did you? No. I only saw the first one. I read the first book back in high school. Yes, I did. 
I was a teenager. What did I know, guys? And girls. Yet, Twilight was, like, the most, like, bland thing I ever read or watched in a movie. It's, like, very, very forgetful. Like, when you watch it once, you're like, what the heck did I just watch? Sparkling vampires in love with this uh, beautiful uh, teenage girl who's, like, so bland and not memorable kind of compared to, like, other, like, uh, vampire stories. Not like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, where she's not a damsel in distress and kicks butt. Yeah, and also, he was also in the fourth Harry Potter film. He's, he's done a lot of good films since outside of Twilight. It's funny... He even said that he hated uh, doing Twilight, but at that time, you can't say no to money. You can't say no to jumpstarting your career as an actor. Right. Yeah. Would you be curious to check out his other films? Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would, I'm not sure what else he's done, but I, my, I, would, I would be curious. My friend Christian said one good film he did was called uh, The Lighthouse with William Defoe. Yes, uh, I'm familiar. I know of that movie. Same. Uh, but I haven't seen it. I, I do want to see it. Willem Dafoe's in it. Yes. And it, he's in it also, and... Uh, it's in black and white. It was yes. shot in black and white. Yes. That's a film that's on my did, must like watch film. I just haven't yeah. gotten around to checking it out yet. But after watching this, and uh, I might want to check out his other films to see how better of a talent actor he is compared to what uh, people gave him the bad rep for. Mm -hmm. Any other final closing thoughts on the Batman? Uh, I would urge everybody to go to see it. Especially uh, if you're a huge diehard Batman fan. Yeah, it is really. It's, a, it's an excellent film. Um... It, it's uh, got a freshness to it, it that kind of reminded me of when I went to see Burton's Batman uh, after all the years of of no superheroes in the movies. And the, the closest thing that I had growing up was the uh, campy Batman television series, which was fun, you know, but it was not anywhere near what these movies are like and in particular. This movie, I, I remember when I first saw Batman uh, in the theater, uh, Tim Burton's Batman, and it was such a refreshing look on it. And I get this, I had the same impression seeing this film. Right, right. Luckily for me, I lucked out. I, I grew up on Keaton's Batman, Christian Bale, I had Ben Affleck, and, and of course, now I have this movie now. It's, uh, I, I feel like, you know, like for once they say, something is getting better for once, rather than because... People complain about how like uh, some things don't get better sometimes. Well, Batman's gotten better throughout the years, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's good that they keep it away from you know this Marvel. I mean, it's the DC, DC. I know what you mean. DC universe. Uh, yeah. I think that gets a little bit uh, tiresome. It does. After a while, it does. And it, it, I mean, it, as much as much as I do love you know, cin I don't mind cinematic universe, but I can see why maybe people could like be a little bit tiring of that after a while because it's like I gotta watch this I gotta watch right, that right especially if it has like a, maybe a big event where you have the Justice League or the Avengers teaming up for this big epic final battle yeah it's, it gets to be a little bit too contrived yeah I first I remember when I, when I was watching I think myself how are they gonna connect this to the DC extended universe but like you said Matt Reeves said he wanted to keep that away as much as possible make just like this his own thing yeah yeah so again, any, any final thoughts, or is that about everything we've no, uh, covered? I think, that, I think that's good. Yes, it was. Uh, so anyway, like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, get the latest updates on my YouTube channel. I will see you next time, and also, most importantly, go check this movie out.